The sparrow's not worried about tomorrow or the troubles to come. The lily's not thinking about the seasons, the drought or the flood. The tree that's planted by the water isn't phased by the fire. So why should I be? Cause you take good care of me. Good morning, church. I hope you're having a blessed day today. Today, we are going to continue our series on end time prophecy, but we're going to have a special lesson today. So I'm not going to go into the book of Isaiah. I'm actually going to look at a verse in the book of Hosea. Now, we did not read this chapter in our series on end time prophecy, uh, Hosea chapter six, but there's a important biblical principle in the book of Hosea that he's even quoted by Jesus in the book of Matthew, but it's all through the scripture, cover to cover, and it is truly an understanding of the heart of God in connection with God's judgments and mercy. And I wanna talk about mercy for a little bit today and what does it mean and what does God desire? Because when you see the global end time landscape and you see the things that are going to happen at the, on the earth and the things that are happening in the earth and the things that will happen yet hereafter, we truly need to understand the heart of God and what God desires for his people and what God desires his people do for others because God's heart for all of mankind. And so this is daily teaching number 600. Today is 600 on our daily teachings, and I'm just so happy and thankful and blessed to have you with us. It's it's uh, amazing that we have uh, crested this pinnacle of going into number 600. I know when we started these series, we had, you know, I remember the day we had one, two, three daily teachings, and then it continued to grow and grow and grow, and then we got to 100, then 200, 300, 400, 500, and now we're at 600. 100 daily teachings. There's over 1,100, I think 1,200 sermons on our YouTube channel. So I just encourage you to continue to follow along with us, receive all of the information that God is producing. And I'm just so thankful for this. So I want to pray and then we're going to jump right into this lesson. We're actually probably going to have a full lesson today on this because I really just want to express my heart and, 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 and kind of talk to you pastorally for a little bit today on what do we do in certain situations? We've encountered this search, we've encountered this specific situation before, and it's came up again. And there is a correct response and there is a wrong response. And without understanding God's heart, you will ultimately make wrong choices. And this is so important, especially in the biblical end time narrative, especially in the generation in which the Lord returns to understand God's heart and God's desire for mercy. And so let's pray, and then we're going to jump right into this. So Father, I thank you. I pray you bless everybody under the sound of my voice. Let the word become wisdom revelation in the knowledge of your son. Spiritual seed sown, producing in our body, mind, will, and emotion, transforming us by the renewing of our mind, conforming us to the image of Christ, growing us up in the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. God, we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, let's do this. Let's just read this verse and then we'll talk for just a little bit about this. Hosea 6, 6. For I desire mercy and not sacrifice and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Now this is, man, this is powerful. And I just want to say uh, a couple things really quickly. Uh, I did put a little poll on our Instagram a few days ago. And it was, what was my favorite verse in the Bible? And of, of course, my favorite verse in the Bible is Song of Solomon 5.8. Uh, I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, that you tell them that I'm sick of love. I'm lovesick. I'm not offended. And then there was a couple other options from 1 Kings 17.3.4, which is my anchor in the word of God. 
And then you have John 16, one, I spoke these things unto you that you would not be offended. It's another one of my favorites, but Song of Solomon 5, 8 is my favorite verse in the Bible. And then it had a question. It said, what is your favorite book in the Bible? Well, for me personally, there was a couple good options from the book of the Revelation or Apocalypse. It was uh, Hosea, Song of Solomon, and then the book of Genesis. And we preach a lot out of those four books of the Bible. Uh, probably more than anything else. And my favorite book in the Bible is Song of Solomon. It's what changed my life personally is the truths inside of that book. So it's it's got a deep place in my personal heart. But then I had just one more on there. I said, what is my favorite Old Testament prophet? And this right here goes to the prophet Hosea. Uh, there's a lot of great prophets in the Old Testament. Uh, we love Daniel. Uh, we're teaching through Isaiah. And the more I study Isaiah, the more I begin to love Isaiah more and more. Um, I probably didn't have the heart for Isaiah before we started teaching this series on end time prophecy and really started studying Isaiah uh, because it was just so hard to understand for me personally. And I understand that there are a lot of people that say, man, some of this stuff is so hard. And I just want to say, I, I agree. There are lots of things in the bible that seem very complicated to understand but as you take time it will make more and more sense and one of the books that i think for a lot of people is very difficult to understand even though it shouldn't be but it is is the book of hosea 14 chapters and these 14 chapters are radical in revelation i mean the things that hosea says i think are some of the most quoted verses in the church and i think so many people quote these verses without even understanding that it's the prophet hosea who said them um hosea prophesied in the same time as isaiah hosea hosea started prophesying roughly around 760 bc which was about 40 years in advance of the assyrian invasion of the northern kingdom of israel in 721 bc and that's a very important detail that Hosea prophesied for 40 years of something that would come hereafter. And then it happened. And then, of course, there are more prophecy in Hosea about the uh, the captivity into Babylon that would come in 586 prophesied well after well in advance and well after his life. Did it happen? Hosea was already dead by the time that uh, that took place in the southern kingdom of Judah. But there's a there's some huge eschatological understanding in the book of Hosea in the first three chapters and then chapter 14, which we've already went through in detail in this series. But there's so much more in the book of Hosea that we took 14 lessons, I think more than 14 actually, and we studied the entire book of Hosea verse by verse. So we have a series on that on our YouTube channel and on our website. I encourage you to go and watch those lessons on the book of Hosea. But this book really put a framework and perspective of God's heart and God's desire for reconciliation and restoration in a people that will repent. God's desire is mercy. God's desire is not the judgment. God's desire is mercy. Judgment is a consequence of an action that has taken place by ungodly people. And when you begin to realize the heart of God for restoration, reconciliation, it's in the entire book of Hosea cover to cover. Uh, chapter 14 specifically, God healed my backsliding. I mean, that's powerful. And that is a prophetic word for the nation of Israel when they come back to the Lord at the end of the age. So there's just so much in the book of Hosea. I just wanted to take a few moments and say that to kind of stir you up to study the book of Hosea. It's, like I said, my favorite Old Testament prophet. There's a lot of great prophets. We love Obadiah. That's another great one if you want to study. It's not. It's just one chapter, the book of Obadiah. It's got some powerful revelations on uh, on pride and not letting pride overcome your heart. And of course, Daniel's got lots of great stuff. They lots of amazing things. The whole Bible's great, but uh, but Hosea specifically for me. Uh, I know a lot of people have probably never even studied the book of Hosea. Maybe you've never even heard anything out of the book of Hosea but it is a powerful book. It is my favorite Old Testament prophet. So let's just talk about Hosea for just a moment to give you a little bit of context on chapter six. So that way you understand what is being said. In chapter six, 
there is this call that goes forth, return unto the Lord. Now, I love that part about chapter six because there was the initial prophetic word in the prophet through the lips of Hosea to the remnant of Israel that said, tell the mother to turn back to God. And, and it's telling you to repent because the way that you are going will lead to your own destruction. So, so, the, so Hosea and the nation is saying, turn back to God. But because of ignorance and rebellion, the people turn away from the Lord. It's, it's, it's a very terrible thing, which will actually, actually lead to the, to the destruction of the Northern kingdom, the destruction of the Southern kingdom and the scattering to the nations. Um, and, and the nation of Israel has came back to become a nation and, and to reclaim Jerusalem. But it, it was, it was, you know, 2000 years, the scattering took place. It was, is terrible, you know, over 2000 years. And so the thing I want to look at for just a moment is what happens in chapter six, where this call goes forth and says, we will return unto the Lord. You know, we, we want to go back to God because they've been facing judgment. They've been, they've been seeing things happen in the land and to the people that's like, man, we, we made a mistake. When we, when we turned away from the Lord, that was not for our benefit. That is actually for our destruction. It's going to be a very bad day if we don't go back to God. And I mean, that's the truth. And this powerful thing, Ephraim and Judah, talking about the northern and the southern kingdom, the total people of Israel coming back and, and turning their hearts back to God. You know, you, you, you kill you know, you have hewn them by the prophets, slain them by the words of my mouth. Judgment is as light that goes forth. And that's so powerful. And, and the reason why I wanted to use that verse, which is verse five, where I read verse six, is that if you remember yesterday in the book of Isaiah or the, the couple days before this in Isaiah 26, when it talked about judgment, is that before the judgment was the blessing, but the blessing didn't teach the people to remain faithful unto the Lord. It's when the judgments of God are in the earth, the people learn righteousness. And that's what was taking place is the nation of Israel was facing this judgment. This judgment was coming against them, this discipline of God. And the word that's spoken next is, I desired mercy more than your sacrifice. You know, I desire a relationship with you and I desire to give mercy more than any of this sacrifice that you're trying to do, he goes, the reason why judgment is there because you transgressed the covenant. You played the whore. You killed the prophets. That's why judgment is taking place because of your act. But that's not what I desired. I desired mercy more than burnt offerings. There's so, there's man, there's something so important about understanding the heart of God. And the heart of God is truly mercy. You know, if you look at Jesus in the New Testament, inside of the New Testament, when Jesus is talking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, he's eating with sinners, with publicans. He's, he's eating with what people would think is the lowest of the low and the ungodly. And, this. and Jesus, and they said, why are you eating with those people? It's in Matthew chapter nine, if you want to go and read it. And Jesus says, I came to call sinners to repentance. He said, go and study what it means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. You know, there's something so important about what Jesus is saying is, I'm going for the people, sinners, but I'm going to call them back to me. I desired mercy. You know, the Bible says that it is the will of God that all men come to the knowledge of the truth, come to salvation. It is the heart of God that all men be saved. You know, hell was not a place made for man. Hell was a place made for the devil and his angels, the demons. It wasn't made for man. But man willfully rebelled against God. It became the place that man would go. The lake of fire was not intended for, for, for God's people. It was, and when I say God's people, I'm talking about original creation, Adam, Eve, and the people that would come from. God didn't intend for the lake of fire for mankind. But it ended up being that because of man's own transgression and rebellion against God. 
So what I want you to understand is that God's heart, God's desire is mercy. It's always been mercy. I'll give you a great example in the Bible. You can go and study this. I know I'm quoting and saying a lot of things. You can study this on your own. But in the in the book of Genesis, you can go back and read in chapter 19. Chapter 19 of the book of Genesis is the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, this is so important because if you go back, I believe in chapter 18 is when uh, Abraham sits down in the heat of the day at the tent door with God and two angels. I mean, that's powerful in and of itself. And, and I don't I want to go into that fully in detail. But the fact that Abraham sat down and had a meal with God, I mean, that's 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 intense. That's powerful. Uh, God's presence never left the earth. You know, God was not. You know, Adam sinned and then God was like, okay, I don't want nothing to do with you anymore. You know, that's how a lot of people think about God is that when I fail or when I sin, God doesn't want me anymore. And that's not true at all. I'm not going to go into that right now, but go back and watch our teachings on Genesis 3 and you'll begin to understand the true heart of God. But what I want to say about that is that when Abraham pleads with God, God says, I'm going to destroy that city. I'm going to go down and, and, and find out what I'm hearing, which is a whole lot of ungodliness rising up out of the earth. He says, I'm going to go down and destroy it. And Abraham says, but well, what if there's 50 righteous people in there? Would you destroy the righteous with the ungodly? God says, if there's 50, I won't do it. Abraham said, what if there's 45? What if there's 40? What if there's 30? What if there's 20? What if there's 10 righteous people in all of the city? Would you destroy the righteous and the ungodly? Or would you destroy the righteous with the ungodly? Would you destroy righteous people at the same time? And God said, if there's 10 people, I will not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And of course, we know the story. In Genesis chapter 19, the two angels go down there. The men of the city try to rape angels. Literally what happens, homosexuality, but rape specifically of those two angels. And then the angels tell a uh, lot they say hey we're leaving now and we're gonna leave right we're gonna let in the two angels lot his two daughters and his wife four people now which which is here's here's something you should really understand you go back and study and understand those daughters were married and the husbands didn't follow so that's a, that's a powerful thing to think about but those four people go to leave the city with the two angels you know and the wife turns back you know and of course she's turned to turned to salt and it's God rains down fire destroyed the city but when Lot is running and he's talking to the angels in Genesis chapter 19 he says I need I need mercy because I need to make it to the mountain if I don't make it to the mountain we're gonna die in this process so give me some mercies give me time to get away you know let, let me go to the house for now and then I'll go to the mountain in the morning because I can't make the mountain in one day but there's this conversation that takes place about his escape from judgment and which is defined as mercy. The mercy of the Lord on full display to save Lot and yet destroy the ungodly. And God says, this is my heart. I desire mercy. I want to spare the people that walk with me. I, I, I will save the people that walk with me. I desire all men walk with me. I made you for me. It was my desire that I created man. I mean, it's, it's my pleasure that I created man. I created you for me. I desire you with me where I am. Jesus said that in John 17. It's God's heart for man to be with God. And God says, I desire to show mercy even above your sacrifices it's it's greater than the works you could do to try to earn my grace he goes i desire to give mercy it's my heart for i desired mercy i i think what's so important about that is sometimes we think we desire mercy now of course we do desire mercy praise god for it that god shows mercy and grace in our life we desire it. but it's not just that man desires to have mercy showed to them but god himself desires to give mercy it's what god wants to do 
And it's so important because in James chapter two, mercy even triumphs over judgment. It is greater to show mercy than to bring forth judgment. It's, it's, it's a nature of God to show mercy. But judgment is required. See, ungodliness, because of mercy, ungodliness cannot be allowed to reign in the earth. So God will release the full execution of judgment to remove ungodliness to those that won't show mercy. To the merciful, they will be shown mercy. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this for a moment, one, it's blessing me. I wanted to preach on mercy. But it can be very common that you get into certain situations in life where somebody does you wrong. You encounter a bad situation. And all you want to do is just, God, judge them. God, destroy them. God, you know, strike them dead. You know, when we want, we want the full execution of the judgment of God right then. And we want God just to release it. Now, we, there, we do understand that the church will be in prayer in connection with the Lord on the release of God's end time judgment. In the book of the Revelation, there is a place and a time for those that will not repent. But in between that, there is still time for people to repent. See, in the generation in which the Lord returns, those that take the mark of the beast, there is no more repentance for that. If you choose that, not only will you not repent, there's, there's no more repentance there. God released the judgment against it. But until then, God's heart is to show mercy. It's why he sent Jesus. And I just want to encourage you today, live a life of mercy. You know, we've seen a lot of people do a lot of terrible things to, 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 to me, to our ministry. I've, heard, I've, I've seen people talk bad about our ministry, stand against our ministry. We've seen all kinds of different things. And we encountered a situation recently where some things happened and... In my heart, you know, it, 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 it'll it make you mad when people do things against the will of God. It'll make you mad. You'll be pissed off. Let's just be clear. It, it'll make you mad. And you, and you want to do something about it. Or you want to call for God to release judgment. God said, show mercy. Show mercy. He goes, I showed you mercy. Show mercy. He goes, that's my heart. That's who I am. That's who you need to be. Somebody that shows mercy. And for me, this began to really change my life. The more I began to show people mercy. We started doing this many years ago, but we encountered another time where we could show ourselves to God and say, you show mercy, we want to show mercy too. Because God desires mercy. You don't have to earn things from us. We will show mercy. It's more than a sacrifice. You don't have to earn it. God gave it freely to me. We will give it freely to you. And I pray this blesses you. Because it really is the heart of God to show people mercy and to really show the heart of God to others. I pray this blessed you. I'm not going to go into any of this more in detail, but it's so important to remember. I desired mercy and not sacrifice. You know, I desired the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Mercy triumphs over judgment. And when you show mercy and you show the love of God and God's heart comes through you to others, it will bring forth salvation in the world and in other people. And we want to thank God for that. Father, bless these people in Jesus' name. We give you all the glory. Amen and amen. Church, I love you. God bless you. Have a great day. Like, follow, share, drop us a comment, and we will see you tomorrow. The sparrow's not worried about tomorrow. Oh, the troubles to come. The lily's not thinking about the seasons. The drought or the flood. The tree that's planted by the water isn't phased by the fire. So why should I be? Cause you take good care of me.
The sun's not worried about the winter. 